This episode is brought to you by the Evolve Artist Program. The Evolve Artist Program is a breakthrough training system designed to take inexperienced and amateur artists to confident, realistic artists, creating professional-grade work in just one year or less. If you've struggled with tutorials that are incomplete, that leave you hanging when you hit roadblocks, and leave your questions unanswered, Evolve is for you. If you're considering art school but don't want to go into debt to do so, Evolve is for you. Or if you went to art school but it let you down with inconsistent methods, Evolve is for you. All of your supplies are included. Premium oil paint is supplied by Old Holland. And all materials, including brushes, canvases, and photo references, are delivered right to your door anywhere in the world. Evolve is a complete A to Z system, including daily feedback on your assignments 365 days a year, live calls with working professional artists, and a supportive and friendly community of like minded students. This is the shortest, clearest path to guaranteed results and the only place that gives you the method, the materials, and the community. Discover how far you can push your skills further than you would at art school and for a minor fraction of the time and cost. Yes, it's real. For full details and for an exclusive 10% discount for YCP listeners, head to yourcreativepush.com slash evolve. Your Creative Push, episode 355. When you're becoming an artist, you need someone to commit to coming alongside you and walking with you until you're where you want to be. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Piper Talladay. Piper is a contemporary realist painter currently residing in Tacoma, Washington, but working with clients across the United States. Her work is centered around equine portraiture rendered in oil, and she is also head instructor at Evolve Artist. And Piper comes on the show today to talk about her journey of becoming an artist, even past the resistance of the limiting belief that she could not grow up to be a working artist. Piper talks about the differences between the Evolve Artist Program and traditional art schools, how technical mastery is missing from most art colleges and schools, and the foundational skills and the portfolio that you need to have before even applying to an art school as opposed to Evolve, where you need no foundational skills. Piper shares more about her artistic path and career, why she honed in on equine portraiture, how her art business began to grow organically, what a typical day looks like for her, and her resistance of not making her personal work a priority. And finally, Piper shares more about the importance of early success and the instructor accessibility in the Evolve Artist program, how instructors are actually able to watch you work, and what she would say to anybody who's on the fence about Evolve. This is a great look at the Evolve program from someone who went through it herself, but is now on the other end teaching. And I know that it's going to inspire you not just to get to your creative work, but to realize that there is also the option to have somebody walking alongside of you during your artistic journey to get you exactly to where you want to be. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy my conversation with Piper Talladay. Piper, welcome to Your Creative Push. Hey, Edwin. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for being on. I have spoke with... Mitch, well, I spoke with Mitch a while ago, like four years ago, but recently he was on the podcast, and then I just spoke with Kevin. And now I am not a visual artist, but after speaking with them, I want to be <laughs> just talking about the Evolve program, and I'm just like so amped up about what Evolve has to offer. Um, and I know you have a unique perspective on the Evolve Artist Program, and you have a really great artistic story. So I'm really excited to kind of dive deep with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. It's a really exciting program, and um, I love talking about it, so I'm, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. Well, before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about you and sort of how you got to the point you are today, uh, both with Evolve, but also just as an artist. Uh, could you kind of maybe lay the groundwork for us and take us back to, I guess, the, sort of the decision to get into art? Was this something that was always on your mind? You always enjoyed painting? You always enjoyed uh, horses? Like kind of lay the groundwork for us. Yeah. So I, I grew up always, I was kind of like the art kid. I was always making things, always creating things. And there was this limiting belief in my mind that I couldn't be 
a working artist. I'm not sure why. I think it was probably I, I had never met a working artist before. But when I was in high school, I started studying with Kevin at his program. And it was kind of, it was the first time I actually saw what an actual working artist was. Because I think in my mind, I had thought that if I wanted to be a working artist, I had to be one of those, those people who had um, art in like the big museums. I had to be that level, like that was a working artist. And it just seemed confusing and unattainable for me. But when I, when I went to Kevin's studio, I was, I saw these artists who were just like me. They were normal people. They were creating incredible art and they were having, you know, successful and fulfilling careers. And I thought to myself, oh, well, you know, maybe, maybe I could do that. Um, So I started studying with Kevin and um, I spent about five years there. Um, The entirety of my uh, high school education, I was there and I was really only going once a week. So I was kind of just dipping my toe into the artistic world, I guess. And, um, then I started college and I started college for education. I wanted to be um, a special education teacher. I thought that that was the path for me. And again, in the back of my mind, I thought, well, you know, I'd like to be an artist, but it's really not something I can do. I remember it was, I think it was, it was like the fall of my, I think my sophomore year of college. And I was sitting and painting a horse in Kevin's studio. And I grew up riding horses. Um, I grew up working in a lot of barns, teaching kids how to ride. It was has always been a big part of my life. Um, that's kind of what my family does. And um, I was sitting there and I was painting a horse because it was what I enjoyed. It was a language that I knew how to speak. And so I was trying to, you know, combine my interests, art and horses. And Kevin walks up behind me and he goes, well, why aren't you doing this for a career? And I honestly, I had never thought about it before. I never thought that it it could be something that would be able to be a successful career for me. And I don't know if it was, you know, limiting beliefs or I'd never really met another living equine artist, I guess. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he, he was like, you, you could do this, you know? So I transitioned in college. I went to finish my degree at an art school. Then when I graduated, I did the full-time program with Kevin. I started teaching with him, working with him, and I just kind of hit the ground running. I made that mental shift that, you know what, I can do this and I want to do this. So I'm, I'm all in. I love it. And you, you have a unique perspective too, because you have seen both educations. You've seen the, the quote, traditional art education in college, as well as uh, Kevin's education. Um, So you have a, a really unique perspective. Can you compare them for us? Can you show where the differences lie for people who haven't maybe experienced either? Yeah, definitely. And I I deeply don't want to knock on art schools because there's a lot of good there, right? And I had a lot of really fantastic experiences in college. Um, But that technical mastery was really missing. Um, There was a lot of classes. I, I take painting and drawing classes and there was no foundations. I didn't, I didn't see a way to get where I wanted to be. And I would ask specific questions like, oh, well, How do I mix this flesh tone or how do I make this feel like form? How do I turn the form? How do I make this person feel like a person? And the answers I got were never really satisfactory because they hadn't built a foundation. So we were expected to come into college with all of this foundational knowledge that we could then build upon. But the majority of students who came in didn't have that. So it's kind of like trying to build a whole education on not really knowing how to read, right? So you're trying to build this philosophy degree upon not knowing how to read at all. So Mm. those gaps were there and it it frustrated me a lot. And I was fortunate enough that while I was in college, I, I actually commuted. So I was able to spend half of my time at Kevin's school and half of my time at my college. So I was able to be building my foundations with Kevin and with this kind of foundational education that Evolve offers while kind of experimenting with new techniques and new ideas at college. Yeah. And you mentioned something interesting that I think holds a lot of people back from maybe going to school that are older, that realize that they love drawing or they love painting or they love being creative when they were a kid um, and then went down a completely different route. Perhaps they went down an education route or 
computer science or any other kind of route because maybe they did have that limiting belief that, oh, this thing that I enjoy doing, being creative or being a painter or whatever, that's not, I don't really see that in the real world. Or their, maybe their parents or, or other teachers told them that that was, you know, not a real path for them. And that's why they had that limiting belief. Yeah. And then later in life, now that, you know, podcasts are out and they can hear and have those kind of distant relationships with other people that are, are doing it. And they realize, oh, wow, I could have done this, or maybe mm-hmm. I could do it now. But I wasted all that time, I got a degree in something completely different. And now I'm an adult, and I don't want to suck at something. So I think that's what one of the really cool things about Evolve is that you don't need to have that foundation that kind of colleges say that you need, you know, you need to yeah. have those basic skills in order. Uh, it's really inspiring, I think, as an, an adult that wants to get into it. Yeah. And you have to have all of these, these portfolios and past experiences and past art experience to, you know, even apply for colleges and you might not even get in. But yeah, the beauty of Evolve is we take you at level zero. You have to have absolutely no experience And sometimes I think that helps people a little bit more because they don't have to overcome past things that they have learned that might be confusing. And they can just kind of step into this art education and this art world with a really clear and open mind. So it's it's really exciting to see people kind of come from always having wanted to create art, but maybe having that, you know, that false belief that you have to have a ton of, um, and I'm using air quotes here, talent. Um, or (laughs) a lot of education, but um, yeah, that they can come in with no prior knowledge, no prior education and really thrive in the Evolve program. It's, It's really exciting to watch them make those discoveries and grow in the program. Now, for you, when you had that aha moment, when Kevin, that that day when Kevin said, hey, you know, kind of nudged you (laughs) sort of in the direction of, you know, you can actually do this. What did that look like from that point on? Like, did you have to get in a new mentality? And then did you have to kind of switch up your mindset? and, And what did your life and kind of your trajectory look like after that point? Yeah, definitely. Um, I kind of had to do, I had to do a 180 because I was on this education track. I thought that I was going to be teaching in public schools and doing that. And I, I kind of had to reshape, reshape what I thought my future was going to look like. And I'm very fortunate. I have a very, very supportive family, a great support system. And I was at the school. I had people encouraging me to do it. So I think it was easy, easier for me because it was what I'd always wanted, but I didn't think was possible. So when someone kind of told me, hey, no, this is possible, and not only is it possible, but it's feasible, and you can be successful if you work hard at it, it's a great niche. Um, When I heard that, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, I've been waiting to hear this, and I'm going to take this and just run, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it successful. And when someone tells you, hey, you can actually make a living doing what you love and chasing your dreams... I was like, oh, yeah, I'm in, 100%. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I'll in, yeah. <laughs> well, so then, especially when you can hone in specifically on what you really love within that, like niching, niching down to horses specifically, what, what made you decide to hone in on specifically horses? I remember Kevin had said to me once um, I, in a casual conversation, um, paint what you know. And Mm -hmm. um, I grew up with horses. I know the language of horses and people who love horses and work in the horse industry. I understand that language. I I know, I mean, I grew up crazed, right? I know every single bone and muscle and connected tissue in the the equine anatomy. I know it all. It's just, it's what I love. It's what I'm passionate about. So it was just kind of like a second language to me. So to be able to express that in art and to be able to kind of offer that to people who feel the same way about horses was really exciting. And it it just felt like second nature to me. And I think that's one of the most profound takeaways that I've gained from four years of doing this podcast is the fact that so many different creative people, when they kind of limit the slate for themselves and really, like Kevin said, write what you know, paint what you know, Mm -hmm. take photographs of what you know, like really niche down. I feel like for many people, they feel like doing that limits their 
customers, it limits their audience, it limits their interest in their work, because it's just like so specific to to them. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's just so many people in the world. And so like, if you have an interest, there's guaranteed to be other people that have that interest too. And actually, when you are a painter or a creative person, and that does something specific, and you can niche down like that, there's a very good chance that you're going to be one of the top performers in that like kind of sub 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 category. And when you can then market yourself, it's like you can you can make new markets for yourself, you can go to, I don't, maybe you can share with us like how you get customers, like how you specifically find customers that might not have been interested in art. But anyway, I just feel like it, it opens up the world when people realize that they yes, they literally can do exactly what they love. And in fact, niching down and doing exactly what they love might help them and it might kind of like clear the field clear the field of their their brains so that like okay i don't have the entire universe that i can paint i can paint the entire universe if i want but when i niche it down uh it it just makes things a little bit more focused if that makes sense yeah 100 percent. and i think so many people try to paint what they think will be popular or what they think people want to see and the people who see your art, your market, they're, they're not stupid. They know what they're looking at. And it's easy to tell when someone is passionate and truly knows and loves what they're painting or what they're trying to represent. Um, your audience is not, you know, they, they're going to believe it if you truly care about it, if you're truly invested in it. I have a student who paints cars and she loves cars and she can talk about cars And I know nothing about cars. So if I sat down and I painted them, it's just not believable. If I tried to write a sentence about a car, you you wouldn't believe it. I would probably end up saying something like, oh, it's a shiny red car. And that's about it. So (sighs) the people who would want to buy that painting aren't really going to believe it. And if she has this passion and she has this drive to create something and she understands the importance of that thing, People are going to be drawn to her work. They're going to be drawn to the way she talks about her work. So, yeah, it, it just goes back to paint what you know, paint what you love, and it people will recognize that and they'll they'll want that. And then kind of going a little bit forward into the whole customer acquisition part of it, have you found that it was like once you did niche down like that and started your business of painting horses. Did you find any difficulties when you first started or what was that kind of experience like? So I was very fortunate that when I started painting horses, because I was so engrossed in the community, um, if I would post a picture of my work, I would have people asking me about it. And I was very fortunate in that as soon as I kind of started to pursue this, I had a couple of people come forward and say, Hey, we really, we would like a portrait. And I was able to kind of build on those smaller portraits and start to create art that other people saw. And um, the people that I would create paintings for would share their paintings, um, their friends would see their paintings. And it was kind of this organic growth where I took a leap, I painted what I loved. And then the people who had commissioned me to do that loved it, shared it, and other people started to come in. So it was really kind of an organic sort of growth. And I'm at the beginning of my career, so it's still growing and I'm still playing with that organic growth. And, but up until this point, it's been, it's been really a great experience in um, how when people love something, they share it and they talk about it. So for me, it's been, it's been really exciting to see that and kind of watch my hard work start to grow and expand. And it's like a snowball. You give it a little push and then you keep pushing it, and eventually it kind of gets its own momentum, and it starts going down the hill, and it's getting bigger and bigger. But it's really exciting after you make that first push to see it kind of start to roll by itself. Yeah, it's like proof <laughs> that you, your idea or yeah. Kevin's suggestion is was, it's real. <laughs> yeah, and and you're right. It's like it's such an asset then to have something that you know a lot about that you because of the fact that you loved it. And then when you can share it, like maybe in forums or communities where, you know, it's just like horse lovers or whatever, and they see that this commission or this this portrait of somebody else's horse, and then all of a sudden they need to have this thing that they never knew that they need to, needed to have. They're, they're not out actively looking for, you know, perhaps a commission uh, portrait of their horse, yeah. but then once they see somebody else that has it, they're like, oh, I need this now. So it's like kind of hand-picking your own your own audience. 
Yeah, exactly. And no one really needs a portrait, right? right? It's not (laughs) something that's going to keep us alive or feed us, but it is something that anchors a moment in time. It it takes a moment in time and it, it, it holds it, encapsulates it. It's really precious. And when you can create that moment for someone, they feel the importance and the weight of it. And then in their own words, in their own experiences, they share it with other people. And then that growth kind of starts to, to build. And now on the flip side of it, do you ever get bored? <laughs> do you ever, are you ever like, I need to paint something different. Like I need to paint like a trash can or paint, <laughs> I don't know, anything that's not a horse. Do you ever get those moments? You know, I actually get this question a lot. And I, I think a couple years ago, I would have been like, no, I never get bored. I love it. They're so intricate. It's so amazing. And to some extent, I don't get bored. I love the subject. I really do. And they are really, really intricate, kind of crazy creatures. If you've ever really looked at the anatomy of a horse, they're insane. It's it's nuts that they can actually walk. They're crazy, crazily built. And they're really fun to paint. But um, sometimes I do like to mix it up a little bit. So right now I'm working on a couple of master copies and just kind of painting some people rather than horses. And it it feels a little odd and foreign and (laughs) I'm eager to get back to horses, but, um, I wouldn't say I get bored. Sometimes I think I have to exercise other, other muscles in my brain, but, um, yeah, I don't necessarily get bored of it or sick of it. I guess you could say. Right. Right. Overwhelmed perhaps. Well, are there any other, uh, resistances maybe that you encounter on a, maybe in your past or maybe now on a daily basis when, uh, whether it's laziness or just uh, fear of rejection or any of the many things that ho- try to hold all of us back, uh, do you experience any of those? I think I'm, I'm very ordinary in that. I definitely do. Mm. And I think this is why I really love teaching and I love encouraging young artists because I'm in it. Like I'm experiencing the difficulties. I get frustrated. I get lazy. I cut corners and then immediately regret it. Um, I sometimes struggle to make time for art, but for the most part, I think probably the biggest struggle for me is, yeah, that, um, that making time for art, especially when you're doing other things, I think it can be, it can be difficult to kind of carve out that time just for yourself, especially when, um, I don't have a, I don't have a hard time carving out time when I'm working on commissions, but oftentimes when I'm doing something for myself, that's when it, it, it seems difficult to make, make the time to do that. And I think that's important for artists. You need to take time to experiment, to try new things, and sometimes just to create something that nobody else sees. It's just for you. And I do think that that can be, that can be difficult because sometimes we don't allow ourselves the time to do a painting just for us that nobody else sees that we can just kind of enjoy. I'm, I'm a very structured person, um, so I, I have every minute of my day kind of planned out, but it's really easy to kind of push um, those paying commissions and my students before my own work, which I think pretty much any other working artist would probably agree. Um, Me too. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't think that's a foreign thing for working artists. Definitely. And well, can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I think that that's, that's certainly something that I struggle with is the notion of planning out my day. I'll have a few things that I know I want to get done. Perhaps I'm, I, I get, I've gotten pretty good at like taking maybe the most important thing and knocking that out in the beginning of the day, which I feel like is a huge accomplishment for me. Um, but in terms of uh, planning out you said every minute of your day. What does that look like? Do you have calendars? Do you have like a weekly kind of checklist of things that you want to get done? Uh, what does Piper's timeline look like? Yeah, I mean, the amount of calendars and day planners that I have is it's ridiculous. Like it's a little overboard. I love them. First off, I think they're aesthetically pleasing. So I have a lot of them. But for me, it's yeah, I have my I have my days really evenly structured. I get up pretty much at the same time. So I can do kind of like, you know, I can eat before I get to work and I can take my dog for a walk, do those kind of early morning things. And then I really get into a lot of evolved stuff. And I think, you know, everyone's working style is different, but for me, I have a hard time painting if I know I have unanswered emails. So if I know that there's a student waiting for me, or if I know that there's things on my to-do list that I have to get done today, if I paint before I do them, I feel uncomfortable. So I usually like to get my kind of my computer work done first, um, my emails answered, and then my 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 brain space is kind of open. 
it's um, non-abstracted, it's clear, I can sit, I can focus on my painting. And that's how I like to work. I like very little distractions while I work. I'll have music or a podcast on, but if I know I have unanswered emails or things on my to-do list that I didn't get done that day, it makes it hard for me to paint because I just keep going back to them. So I, that's kind of how I structure my day. I get my, um, my student work and my evolved work done first, and then I kind of settle into painting and I can continue that as late into the night as I need to. Yeah. It's all about what works for each individual. Exactly. I know (laughs) I'm pretty good at pushing off emails and pushing like (laughs) wiping them out of my brain, which is (laughs) inappropriate perhaps. Um, but I think that's a testament really to evolve and what I've heard, uh, even from, from Kevin, just the, how available the instructors make themselves for the students, like putting them first so that the student really can get the feedback that they need right away and also get through the the program. I don't want to say get through it like it's some huge chore, uh, <laughs> but, you know, get through it as, as fast as they, as they want, as they feel like they need to. Yeah. And it's, it's important to have someone there to answer your questions. Um, I think we're one of the very few programs that has the response rate that we do. And we try really hard to be there constantly for the students. We have, places where they can schedule live calls so we can talk, I mean, face-to-face, we can do um, video calls, we can email, we can kind of do chats. Our goal was to be there for the student because it's modeled after Kevin's studio. And the beauty of that studio is if you have a question, you just kind of stand up and you ask it. You walk over to Kevin, you say, hey, I have a question. And that level of availability is is really priceless and it, it makes you feel supported. And I think that's one of the biggest things that a lot of artists lack. And as they try to learn and they try to kind of create these skills on their own, there's there's no one really there to answer questions, specific questions that they may have. And there's really no one there to encourage them. And I think that that's one of the reasons we try to be so available is we want to be that encouraging voice. We want to be that support system that you need when you're becoming an artist. You need someone to commit to coming alongside you and walking with you until you're where you want to be. Yeah. Especially when you're first starting out, what, what are some of the common concerns or questions or maybe worries that you see from brand spanking new students? So I think for potential students, they have a hard time believing the program is real, but I think <laughs> that's, that's another thread. But for new students who first come in, I was, I was t- actually talking to a student about this um, a couple weeks ago, and he had had some other successes in his life. And he had mentioned that one of the biggest things that kept him motivated was he had early success. And so that's kind of been something from the beginning of all that we have used to shape our community. And it's we want our students to have early success. So we want them to feel like they are on the right path that if they have a question, they're in a safe place where they can ask it and they can get a clear answer. Um, And that early success means that they're supported right from the beginning. So I see students come in and some of them are unsure when or where they can ask questions. A lot of times in education, I think we are hesitant to ask questions. Um, I don't know if we, we think it makes us seem like we don't know what's going on. Or mm-hmm. if the teacher's going to get tired of us asking questions or if we're going to seem like we you know, aren't the right fit. But I think students are wary to ask questions. They're wary to ask and reach out for help. So as soon as students are in the program, we really kind of start to build that idea that this is a community. And if you need help, there's students who really want to answer your questions and talk to you and encourage you. And there's a whole team of instructors we're here for you. Like we're here for you from block one to block eight. And you can ask a million questions a day and we're going to answer them. And we're committed to getting you to where you want to be. Yeah. I think that's, I think you nailed the the hugest part of life really (laughs) is that (laughs) those gaps in your knowledge or those gaps that you might not even know that you have, or like you're one question away from filling that gap uh, that maybe Maybe a question that you have that you feel is too basic, too primitive, too uh, inexperienced or or whatever to ask is that question that opens up the world for you that you realize, okay, once I get this question answered, once I solve this thing or get this one 
tiny little percentage of my uh, art education kind of figured out, all these other new questions open up for me, or maybe all these other new answers to questions that I never knew I had open up um, to be able to have that kind of safe space is so important, not just in Evolve, but just in in life. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, there's that saying, there's no stupid questions and Mm -hmm. there's not. If you have a question, if, if you need something cleared up, ask it. And I think that, yeah, our biggest goal is to create an environment where people feel excited to ask questions. They want to find answers and solutions to their problems. And I think that creates this desire to keep learning. When you figure out the solution to a problem that you're having by working with someone and you kind of get that success, it drives you to want to learn more and to continue to elevate your skills to get better. It's very motivating when you have a question and you learn something from the answer and you can keep moving forward. Yeah. And it also adds so much to the the communication um, and the community level, the community aspect of making art and being an artist and having that kind of camaraderie. It's like, It's like when you go to the doctor uh, and they ask you, you know, underlying health conditions, if you hide stuff that you, that's going on with you, like they can't give you the correct prognosis or the correct ways to um, get healthy. It's the same with, with any kind of education. If you don't kind of share that you're confused about something or that you're not quite sure you have that question that you're afraid to ask, that limits the, the ability of the instructor to help you to become a better artist. Yeah, definitely. And we've actually created, um, so we use video chat rooms to talk with our students and we've created these kind of homework rooms and students come and they work on their homework and we encourage them, let us see you work, turn your camera so we can see what you're doing um, because you're learning online, right? But we still want to see you working. We want to kind of watch you and we want to be there for you to make sure that you're doing everything right that we can catch issues if you're, you know, holding the brush wrong, if you're putting way too much paint on your canvas. We can see that when you upload your homework, if you put too much paint on your canvas, but maybe you're doing something that we couldn't have imagined from your uploads and we can actually watch you work and we can make sure that you're really on the right path from technique to how you're working, to your setup, to your easel height or, you know, the angle that which it's standing. So yeah, we really try to cover all of those bases and make sure that the student is not only feeling seen, but is actually being seen and we can see their work, see how they're working and help them to kind of start to engage in this community. I love that. And what are are maybe one or two of the common mistakes or maybe bad habits that you see from new students uh, through that? So it it definitely varies. Um, I mean, I've seen students who, when they begin to measure from life, so if they're proportionally measuring, you know, their easel's the wrong way. They're kind of measuring over their body and twisting themselves so their proportions aren't correct. Um, And it's just little things that you start working and you really don't notice, like, and it's, it's generally something kind of silly that you wouldn't think about, but you've put your paint palette on the wrong side of your body. So you're crossing over yourself to get your paint, you're making a mess. Um, or you have your painting taped on your easel too high. It's technical things that you wouldn't really think about because you kind of sit down and you start working and you get in this zone and you're struggling with something, but you don't quite know what it is. And it doesn't seem to be the technique of how you're holding the brush. It doesn't seem to be the paint that's on your brush, but we do kind of get blind to to silly things like, oh, well, your your easel's way too tall for you or way too short for you. You're hunched over as you're working, you need to kind of like sit up and see what you're working on. You need to be able to step back and look at your work. It's, you know, a million different things. And we really try to make sure that we can see every aspect of what the student's doing to make sure that we're really guiding them in the right direction. Now, you said uh, before that some of the students, uh, before they become students, have a hard time believing it's real. (laughs) So (laughs) let's actually pull on that thread. What are some of the things that they can't quite believe about it? So on our website, we have this um, calculator. So you can go and you can kind of determine where you'll be if you put in a certain amount of hours for a certain amount of weeks. And I can't give you the exact numbers, but I think it's like if you work 10 hours a week for like three or four weeks, something like that, 
you'll be in direct painting. And direct painting is this kind of these hyper realistic paintings. They're beautiful. They're exact. They're really dramatic. When you see them, they look like photographs. And they're they're really incredible. The students do incredible work, and it's it's only the fourth block, so they've only done three educational blocks before getting there. And it's a big jump up. It's really amazing. I love seeing students step into that. But I think people have a a hard time believing that's possible. And a lot of it is because they've been struggling for years and years, kind of bouncing around different educational techniques, trying different things, trying to achieve this result without having the foundations in place. So they can't believe because they don't really know that they're missing these important foundations. And those foundations are kind of the missing puzzle piece, right? That's that's what you need to build on to improve. And because they're missing those foundations, they just can't figure out how a student could go from not knowing how to paint at all to creating these hyper-realistic paintings in well under a year. They just, it's it's kind of mind-boggling. Um, mm-hmm. For me, it makes sense because I... I have been in the school. I've seen people do it year after year. It's just kind of like, yeah, that's that's what we do because we give you a good foundation and when you get there, you can do it. But it is it is hard to believe because they're really incredible paintings. Right. And what would you say to somebody who maybe doesn't necessarily want to paint horses, but they already have their <laughs> like they already kind of know and have the advantage maybe of of knowing exactly what they would want to paint. Um, and it's not perhaps some of the material that, that they see on the website. They don't want to paint, you know, blocks <laughs> or like laying those kind of fundamentals. Um, what would you say to them? Like, would they be able to paint anything they want or anything that's kind of in their interest list <laughs> um, once they get those fundamentals? Is it like a, as, as simple as getting those fundamentals, getting through the four blocks, and then they can kind of go veer off in whatever direction they want? Yes. Yeah, so um, we actually have eight blocks to our, our program and it's broken up between um, the foundations and the mastery level. So we recommend that students do the foundation program and then move into the mastery program. And the foundation program is, is fairly strict. We have photographs that you'll paint from and then you'll also be painting from life. So you have some control there to set up what interests you. You can set up still lives if you're interested in... I don't know, let's say baseball caps, you could paint a baseball cap. Um, So you can do, you can add little pieces of your interest in, even in the foundation block. Um, And then as you move into the mastery level block, um, five, six, and seven are kind of these mastery techniques that give you new language and new ways to paint and new kind of techniques and approaches um, that you can use to make your paintings even better. And then in block eight, we kind of say, okay, this is it. Let's start to find where you want your voice to be heard in the artistic world. Let's start to find a a niche to start in, take that place and paint what interests you. If you're interested in landscapes, paint landscapes, use what you've learned, use your foundations, use all of these things to begin to paint what you want to paint. And we do try to keep the students, we don't want them to bite off more than they can chew especially in the foundation level, because we want them to stay within the kind of boundaries that we have. And those boundaries are what makes strong foundations. But once they kind of get into the upper blocks, into the mastery portion, they're really unleashed to kind of create what they want to create. And it's really exciting. We have a couple of students at the end of the program who are interested in sci-fi. So they've been kind of making these composite photos and creating these landscapes and these worlds, and making these really amazing paintings that I couldn't even imagine. And they have these foundations. Their foundations are shored up and they're confident and they understand color mixing. They understand value. And now they can just create what they've always wanted to create. There's no limitations. They're just, they hit the ground and they're running. That's awesome. That's so, that's so inspiring. It's so exciting too. (laughs) It is. As a teacher, it's really, it's very exciting and amazing to see. That's so cool. What would you say to somebody who um, is maybe on the fence about Evolve? I would say have a conversation with someone, whether it's uh, talking to one of our students in our free Facebook group or 
talking to one of us, seeing if it's a right fit for you. Just ask someone. I mean, we're real people and we respond to your emails. We see the things you, we see the questions you ask. And if, if you're on the fence, reach out to us, have a conversation with us. We, we'd love to encourage you. We'd love to see where you're at. We'd love to um, kind of talk to you about what may be holding you back. And if the program's a right fit for you, yeah, just reach out, have a conversation with us. Very cool. Yeah. And we'll have an opportunity for that for people as well. We'll have a webinar on June 2nd. So we'll have some details at the end of this episode, if you are interested in having that conversation. All right, Piper, this has been so much fun, uh, but it's time for the final push where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today and just give them your best final words of encouragement and push them to pursue their own creative passions. So my push would definitely be get involved, get involved with the community, find a group of people who are wanting and willing to push you forward, um, who are excited about you making art, um, find those people, find them, whether it's a Facebook group, whether it's a group in person, whether it's an education community, find them, get connected and, um, start to grow as an artist. Absolutely. Yeah. Build that community to help them to help you to like kind of crush those limiting beliefs that you have about, about yourself and where you can go in life. Exactly. Piper, thank you so much for coming on the show today, for giving us that push, for sharing more about your life, your artistic career, and uh, more about Evolve. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Of course. And for everybody listening, you can find Piper on our Instagram page. It's Piper Talladay underscore art. And we'll have that linked up at today's show notes page, along with everything else at yourcreativepush.com slash 355. Piper, thanks again. Awesome. Thanks, Yegwin. Huge thank you to Piper for taking the time to come on the show. Man, the amount of care that the Evolve community has is really profound, and I think that it came through in this episode. Piper's right. When you're becoming an artist, you need somebody to commit, to commit to coming alongside you and, and walking with you and watching you uh, so that you get to where you want to be. And that is what you get with Evolve. So if you have that same type of limiting belief that Piper once had, that you'll never be a working artist, that it's impossible for you to become a working artist, I hope that this was some inspiration to you, whether you choose to sign up for Evolve or not. You can do it regardless. Evolve is just going to help you to get there faster. And next week, we have Kevin Murphy on for a really deep conversation about the Evolve program and how it compares to traditional art schools and why traditional art schools are most likely going to fail you, to let you down. And it's really inspiring to see how many of you are taking an interest in Evolve and taking those first steps to bringing your skills to a professional level. And if you're still on the fence, like I said, next week we talk with Kevin. And the week after, we wrap things up with a conversation with one of the current students who has just about finished the curriculum. And if you want to find out more information about Evolve, head to yourcreativepush.com slash evolve. There's a little video for me there, as well as a ton of before and after images, student examples, everything you need to know, yourcreativepush.com slash evolve. You'll get 10% off for being a listener of Your Creative Push. And if you still have questions that are unanswered, you can sign up for the webinar, which is going to be on June 2nd. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash webinar to get more information about that. And even if you listen to this after June 2nd, still go there because I will have a replay and answer any other remaining questions that you might have. But that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you were inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done. And we will be here for you next week if you need that push again. I love you all so much. And remember that the universe needs your creations and you are the universe. Bye. Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to subscribe to YCP on your favorite podcast app. Or better yet, join the newsletter, where you'll get each week's episode, YouTube video, inspirational resources, and a sneak peek at the following week's guest, all in one weekly email. Again, that's yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe.